Okay, we are now. Okay. All right, so let's get started then. Thank you again for joining us today. Kalispera, to those of you who are in Athens, good evening. And to those of you who are in the States, good morning. Kalimera. Um, as you know, I'm Dina Skias, the Director of Student Affairs here at Webster Athens. And uh, welcome to our second virtual lecture. It's part of a series that we're doing throughout the year in honor of Greece's Independence Bicentennial. So last month we had our first virtual lecture with Dr. Spikas talking about the birth of modern Greece. And today we're gonna have Professor Joanna Vasiliou who will be talking about the birth of the modern Olympic games in Athens in 1896. So we're really looking forward to this. I'm gonna turn it over now to Dr. Susanna Michalidis who's the vice rector of the Athens campus and she will introduce Professor Vasiliou. Okay. okay, hello everybody again. It's so nice to see the whole family, family of Webster Athens and also family of the Professor Joanna Vasilio. <laughs> Joanna is an old colleague of ours. We spent with Joanna so many years and uh, we keep this interesting work together. Joanna is uh, teaching many of you English, she is teaching also Greek, she is teaching also the Olympic Games and in some other classes in literature and also uh, the classes which are connected with the Greek culture. It, uh, as Jana is a very experienced, very lovable, wonderful colleague, and I think you are all enjoying her classes. Well, and especially, you know, what when Jana talks, well, we are missing now this because we are all uh, line working. When uh, sometimes, well, when I'm leaving my office uh, on the people, I can hear her voice. Either it is on the uh, first floor or on the ground floor, or she is in her office. So, Gianna, well, you are welcome. It's very nice to speak about the Olympic Games and how they started, restarted in reality, and it was a great event which is also connected with the Greek history, Greek history uh, after the getting the independence. So it's very nice that we'll have today, nice presentation. So you're welcome and we'll enjoy and hope that everything what she will tell us. Thank nice. you. Oh yes, thank you. Thank you and thank you all for, for joining. And it's so nice to see uh, my dear colleagues and also my dear students, okay, and some of my former students, eh, Elizabeth and Sophia and Felicia. So um, I hope, yes, you, you, are, you will be enjoying this uh, presentation. It's on the revival of the Olympic Games. Uh, and um, I, let me not say more, okay? Let's begin the presentation. So um, the presentation is entitled The Rebirth of the Olympic Games. And we are going to begin with our wonderful word, elas. And let's consider where the word elas is derived from. So as you see, it is derived from the prefix el, meaning sun, bright, shiny, or ilios meaning sun, plus the ending las, meaning rock or stone. Thus, elas refers to the land of the sun and the rock. Also, it refers to the Hellenes, the Greek people. Elas was the founding country of the pioneering and established concepts of E eleftheria, freedom. L, logos, speech or the spoken word. L, logiki, logic. A, areti, virtue. S, sophia, wisdom. Sofrosini, prudence. Elas is also the home of the Olympic Games. 
The ancient Olympic Games started in 776 BC in the sacred and fertile land of Olympia, a town in the province of Ilia in the Peloponnese, honoring Zeus, the king of the gods. In ancient times, the games were held on one day and eventually spread over five days. In the history of the Olympic Games, the event is held every four years, and this four-year interval is also called Olympiad. At this time, in both ancient and contemporary Greece, in the holy grounds of Olympia, there's a devout processional ceremony in which the Olympic flame is lit, signaling the initiation of the upcoming games. Thereafter, the flame is passed on to the designated host country. Athletics, derived from the Greek word athlos, meaning, quote, unquote, hardship, or, quote, unquote, struggle, were an integral part in the education and daily life of the youth, primarily the males. From a fairly young age, the boys were trained and they were trained hard to become fit soldiers and to be in readiness in time of battle. In fact, only the free Greek born males could compete in the games. The Athenian girls were trained to be suitable mothers and housewives. Therefore, they could not partake in the games nor could they attend them. Contrary to this, the Spartan women received athletic training and could compete and appreciate the spectacle. The stadium race, from which the English word stadium is derived or also referred to as running race, is the oldest Olympic sport in the world. This was a 200 yard race, and it was the only event at the very first Olympics in 776 BC. And it remained the sole event at the games until 724 BC. Another old competitive sport was wrestling, dating back as far as 3000 BC. This was introduced into the ancient Olympics in 708 BC. The male athletes competed in the game for personal honor. The victor would receive all the glory and admiration, while the loser would return home to his mother in shame. In the ancient Olympic games, there were no gold, silver, and bronze medals. The winner was crowned with an olive wreath made of wild olive leaves from the sacred tree near the temple of Zeus at Olympia. The victorious athletes had numerous privileges, among which was having a statue erected in their honor. There are also myths wanting the athletes to compete nude so as to avoid unexpected mishaps. There are stories of runners who were very close to the finish line, but ended up losing because their shorts slipped off. Of course, the Greeks were not ashamed of their nudity, for they boasted it was exactly that which distinguished them from the barbarians. The Olympic Games were a time of tribute to Zeus and the competing athletes and the festive celebration for all. It was also a time of peace throughout the mainland, adhering to the Olympic truce, which is the cessation of all warlike and hostile activities. And as you can see here, this dates back to the 8th century BC. It began seven days prior to the opening of the Olympic Games, ended on the seventh day following the closing of the Games, 
and it was imposed so as to ensure that athletes and spectators could travel safely to the games and return to their respective hometowns. It is also known that the messenger would go from city state to city state announcing the commencement of the games and inviting everyone to come together in this glorious event. This was a significant time for people to socialize and for members of the city states to voice concerns, difficulties, or problems and arrive at unified solutions. With the passage of time and the prevalence of Christianity, the Olympic Games were abolished in 393 AD by the Christian emperor Theodosius I, considering them pagan festivals or celebrations. The timeline of the Olympic Games was also interrupted during World War I in 1916 and twice during World War II in 1940 and in 1944. Recently, due to the 2020 COVID-19 outbreak, the Summer Olympic Games were postponed for a year. So we await, okay, that these games will be with us this coming summer, okay, 2021 in Tokyo. The visionary and founder of the modern Olympics, also known as the father of modern Olympics, is our very, not own, but we would like to call him our own, Frenchman Baron Pierre de Coubertin. He, together with our very own, this time, Greek man, Dimitris Vikelas, Secretary General of the International Olympic Committee, dreamt of uniting all the nations in friendship and peace through sports. And we also see Cubertin's ideals, okay, expressed, basically the Olympic ideals expressed in the Olympic motto. And as you see, the Olympic motto is Citius Altius Fortius, a Latin expression meaning faster, higher, stronger. As well as in the Olympic Creed, Again, as we see here, signed by Pierre de Coubertin. And according to Pierre, the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. Consequently, this concern for the reenactment, uh, the reenactment of the Olympics sparkled the revival of the games in 1896, and they proposed that the host country be Athens, Greece, the initial birthplace of the games. The game started on April 6, 1896, and lasted nine days. Now pertinent, okay, to the Olympic symbols is also the Olympic flag. And as we see here, this is represented by five rings linked together, intertwined together, symbolizing, okay, the unity, the global unity of all the countries coming together in peace, in the name of sportsmanship. And uh, we understand that the, con the continents, as you see here, are Europe, Africa, America, Asia, and Australia, represented all also by the various colors of the flag. And this was designed by Pierre in 1913. And again, according to Coubertin, 
the flag could compose the colors of every nation's flag at the time of its inception, which was also recognized as the Olympic symbol in 1915. Now, going back to our 1896 games, the suggested venue was the Panathinaiko Stadio in the heart of Athens. Originally built in 330 BC, the stadium had been excavated, but not rebuilt and ready to house the 1896 Olympics. However, through the direction and financial assistance of Georgios Averov, a wealthy Egyptian Greek merchant, it was restored with white pandelic marble distinguishing it among other landmarks of the 19th century for its fine quality and archeological value. Now, if any of you, I, I'm sure you have been into the stadium, but if you actually you know, uh, are able to visit the stadium at some point, you will see also the memorial of Averov on the left side, the left wing of the stadium, okay? As he was the main fund, you know, funder of this wonderful creation. The inaugural games of 1896 were attended by as many as 200 athletes, 280, I'm sorry, athletes, all male from 14 countries with the largest delegations coming from Greece, Germany, France, and Great Britain. And here I also want to, um, Note that another ingrained and rooted symbol, okay, of the Olympics is the Olympic oath, uh, my dears, okay, which is taken by every athlete, okay, before going into the athletic arena. And um, Cuberdin had uh, actually he had uh, called for an oath. Uh, as early as 1906, as he was the president and the, fo the founder of the um, International Olympic Committee at the time. And he, he wanted an Olympic oath to ensure fairness and impartiality. Now we understand that the athletes, the, the athletes oath was first taken at the 1920 Summer Olympics in Antwerp with oaths for the officials and the coaches added on in 1972 and 20, uh, 2010, 2010. Uh, of course, our athletes then once uh, or before going into the athletic uh, arena, uh, swore, okay, took and swore to the oath uh, which was basically making a solemn promise, okay? Uh, and this was uh, done at the opening ceremony of each Olympic event. So let's read together, okay, uh, what the oath says. We promise to take part in these Olympic games, respecting and abiding by the rules and in the spirit of fair play. We all commit ourselves to sport without doping and cheating. We do this for the glory of sport, for the honor of our teams, and in respect for the fundamental principles of Olympism. At that time, the athletes of the games of 1896 competed in 43 events such as track and field, cycling, swimming, gymnastics, weightlifting, fencing, tennis, and wrestling. Over 60,000 spectators attended the opening day of competition. And that was where the Olympic hymn or anthem was sung and heard for the first time. The hymn was composed by Spiridon Samaras, and the lyrics were by the Greek poet Kostis Palamas. In 1896, or uh, sorry, the 1896 Olympic Games featured the first marathon, 
a distance of about 42 kilometers or 26 miles. Pheidippides is the central figure in the story that inspired the marathon race. He is said to have run 40 kilometers or 25 miles from Marathon to Athens to deliver the news of the Greek victory over Persia in the Battle of Marathon at 490 BC. Addressing the magistrates in session who were very anxious as to how the battle had ended, he said, quote, joy to you, we have won, unquote. And there and then he collapsed, breathing his last breath with the words, quote, hail, we are the winners, unquote. The race became the highlight of the games and was won by Spiros or Spiridon Lewis from Marusi, a northern suburb of Athens, becoming a national hero in the process. And here is where I also want to um, give you the most recent symbol and treasure of the modern Olympics, which is the anthem of the authentic marathon entitled, and I'm quoting the name, Nenikikamen, translated as, we have won. This was recently composed, okay, in 2019, by the highly acclaimed songwriter and composer, George Theophanus. According to Theophanus, the word, quote, Nenikikamen, Nenikikamen, unquote, is not just a word, but the meaning of life and the will to begin and finish successfully our own personal marathons, unquote. Helene de Portales of Switzerland became the first woman to compete at the Olympic Games in Paris in 1900. She became the first female Olympic champion as a member of the winning team in the first one to two ton sailing event on May 22, 1900. The first Winter Olympic Games were held in 1924 in Chamonix, France. Summer and Winter Games were held in the same year until 1992, when the Winter Games were moved two years after the Summer Games. In the name of equality and fair play, the Paralympic Games were founded by the neurosurgeon Sir Ludwig Gutman in 1948. The Paralympics originally started as a way to help soldiers that had been wounded in World War II, especially those with spinal injuries. Eventually, the games were open to people with physical disabilities, giving them the equal chance to compete in an international sports event. The first Paralympic games were hosted in Rome in 1960, featuring 400 athletes from 23 countries and eight different sports events. Some of these were archery, para swimming, and wheelchair basketball. Currently, there are 28 Paralympic sports sanctioned by the International Paralympic Committee, 22 summer sports, and six winter sports. The Paralympic motto is, quote, spirit in motion, unquote, introduced in 2004 at the Games in Athens. 
The former motto was, quote, mind, body, spirit, unquote, introduced in 1994. The first winter games in Paralympics history were held in Sweden in 1976, having taken place every four years since then. And here is where I also would like to share with you the Olympic and Paralympic values, which are also very, very important values, okay, within the Olympic Games. And we see on the left, the Olympic values, friendship, respect, excellence, which are also paramount in the Paralympic values, together with determination, equality, courage, and inspiration. The most successful Paralympic athlete ever is Trisha Jorn, an American Paralympic swimmer. Born blind, she won 55 medals in total, 41 gold, nine silver, and five bronze medals between 1980 and 2004. The Athens 2004 Games, also officially known as the Games of the 25th Olympiad, were once again hosted in their righteous birthplace, Athens, Greece. The Games began on August 13, 2004, and the location was the newly constructed Olympic Stadium in Calogresa. Both the opening and closing ceremonies mirrored the historical and cultural heritage of the Greek civilization and its people. The games represented high competitive standards, attendance, and female contribution, as well as anti-doping policies. The game saw 10,625 athletes compete from 201 countries. There were 301 medal events in 28 different sports. For the first time, the wrestling category featured women's wrestling and women competed in saber fencing. The motto of the games was, quote, welcome home, unquote, reflecting the return home. The official mascots were Athena and Phoebus, inspired by the ancient Dedala. And the Dedala, okay, my dears, is the uh, slide on the left, as you can see, uh, and this is the inspiration for the mascots, okay, the slide on the left, the ancient Dedala, which were toy dolls that also had religious symbolisms. Phoebus and Athena were brother and sister, and Athena was named after Athena, okay, or Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and Phoebus was named after the god of light and music, respectively. They represent the link between Greek history and the modern Olympics. For the Paralympic Games, the mascot was Proteas. And see here, you see the two slides, okay? One in English, the other in Greek a seahorse that was to convey the nature of the competitions and the athlete's constant goal of achieving excellence. The International Olympic Committee President, Jacques Rogue, in 2004, 
declared the Athens Olympics, quote, unforgettable dream games, unquote. Truly, the games were a huge success, making the Greek people very emotional and proud and paving the way for future events to follow in their place of origin. The Olympic flame is still burning in our hearts as it is a weathered and indelible symbol. Hail to the Olympic spirit and brotherhood. Zito to Olympiaco Pnevma. Zito y Elada. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dina. Maybe it was more than you expected. I'm so sorry if it was a long one. No, no, no it's very nice. Thank you, Joanna. Thank Dina. You, Joanna. Let's let's open it up now for questions and answers. Joanna, that was a fantastic explanation of the modern Olympic Games. Thank and you, my dear. Uh, of the ancient games as well. I, so, I traced it a little bit also back to the historical, you know, the, the, the ancient Olympics, okay? Because that's where every, that's where it all started, okay? From ancient, right? From ancient Greece. Yeah. And uh, yes, and to tell you the truth, I was, I was very, I felt very emotional in writing this paper. Okay, myself. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, uh, it brings out the pride in me for being a Greek woman myself. Okay, so <laughs> Good. exactly. I, I have a question, Joanna. Yes. When you read the oath, mm -hmm. uh, when was it written? Because it's talk, talking about doping. Was there doping concerns? No, in the you know the uh, okay. It was a call. Uh, the call for the oath was announced in 1902. Yeah. But as I told. Okay, the oath, um, the first oath was taken by athletes in the 1920 Summer Games in Antwerp. And then this oath also, you know, there was an oath that was also for the judges and the officials and the coaches. Okay, and all of these oaths were united, became united as one in the 2018 Olympic Games, you see. Mm -hmm. So all, all of... Within this oath, there were, within, let's say, the original oath, there were more words added. So I gave you the one that had also the doping, okay? Uh, oh, the okay. anti-doping, of course, uh, policy within it. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Okay. I can see. Doping. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, because there, were, there wasn't any doping at the time, okay? Of right. the original. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I gave you the one that includes all of the three oaths together. You know, it's a united oath. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anna, you mean that during the ancient times there were no dopings? I, I that's what that's what they claim. Okay, there was no doping. But you know that they were a certain kind of, of the purity which the uh, sports people should have, you see. That's why, you see, they were going through a special ceremonies in our ancient Olympia to, to show that they were completely pure, that they won't be participating or cheating on something. And there were many interesting things, by the way, in ancient times. Of course, it's about modern times, but because women were not allowed to participate. That's the right. Sports, yes. But there were interesting things which were happening. Mother, for instance, of one of the famous sportsmen, I think it's a famous story and all of us maybe know this. That's well, right. uh, yeah, when she screamed from uh, uh, the uh, win for the winner, she was so happy. Well, but it was also interesting how she was um, judged. She was taken to the court and uh, according to the laws, she was supposed to be executed. But there was it, this, but that, well, she made, a, she was a criminal. Yes, for screaming and participating as a woman. But she was a mother of a 
champion of the winner. Oh, yeah. This save him. So it's also interesting, you see things. But uh, of course, doping wouldn't be used uh, at that time because it was known, it was known, but it was kept under the secret in the you know, uh, different places where, well, only was maybe for uh, the, uh, some of, of the ladies who would be serving in, uh, in uh, Delfus to predict certain things. But uh, you see, it, it, it would be a huge punishment for something which would be not honest. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good. Okay, it was nice. And well, Dina? No, yes, I, I agree with anybody you. Anybody has just, any questions? Yes. Yeah, in the ancient days, I know they used to put up statues of the people who yes. cheated, not, yes. statues, not not to honor them, but to. to Kind of shame the them. Wooden, yes. The yeah, they shame them so that when you would enter the stadium, and I know some of the students that are, you know, they come abroad for the study abroad program. We visit ancient Olympia uh, every year, mm -hmm. every semester, and they get to see and learn about this up hand, up close, and that's one of the things that they that really sticks to their brains because you you see the base of the where the, the statues are, zantes they call them. Um, that shamed the athlete that tried to cheat mm -hmm. and so it was a huge huge disgrace to the to the um not just to the family or to the athlete himself but to the city where the athlete came from of so course, of course. Helping, you know, people get then, their, their medals removed right doesn't that happen that's right. of, course, of course that's right that's right yeah yeah, yeah because Drop. the 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 uh, champion let's say who you know received let's say you know the victory in you know his own his honor was also the one that also honored you know all his family as well so honor also came upon the family you know not only to the to the victor personally but also to his entire family exactly yeah Joanna in your presentations you when you were talking about Hellas yes Hellas and how you put it, it's, it's very important for those who doesn't know, and I'm sorry that again, I'm saying this, that many students are not participating in this because it's very, very important for them to know this thing. There was one thing, for instance, which is also very important, how to decipher Hellas. It is Arete. Arete, right. this is very important. This is also, well, was taught not only to the people who would be participating in the Olympic Games, but to the people who would be getting uh, education at the time, that how you have to know how to write, how to uh, speak, uh, and also to be uh, honored, to know what is honor, what is virtue. You, so to go against it, it would be a huge, huge shame. And this would be very also important. It was nice, journey. <laughs> I thought about the acronym, you know, because I, I'm like, oh, let me see if I can do something with a word alas. And notice I have not given anywhere the word Greece, okay? Because alas is elada, okay? And I don't want to be mean here, okay? And nor do I want to, you know, point the finger at anyone. But uh, alas is elada. And this is why through the acronym, I also, as I said, and as I introduced, okay, my, in my speech, these were concepts that were founded, okay? They were pioneer concepts and they were founded, okay, by these people, our wonderful people in ancient Greece, okay, who came up with these wonderful concepts. The concept of eleftheria, the concept of lo logos, the spoken word, okay? Because this is what language is. It is, okay, the spoken word. And then logiki, logic, okay, Aristotle, our famous philosopher, right? The pioneer of that wonderful principle, okay? And virtue, as we said, okay? Areti. That's right. right. And of course, Sophia. And, you know, as we, we said, these, these uh, athletes in ancient Greece were all very disciplined, very disciplined people, okay? Because through athletics or gymnastics, okay, gymnastiki, 
And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I wanted to put so much more into the speech, but how much more can you say? <laughs> because we understand that gymnastiki is also, you know, derived from the word gymnos, which means nude. Okay. Uh, and uh, this was hard training, which meant that they needed to be completely disciplined, okay, in order to undergo such training. So all of these wonderful words, okay, you know, go, and this is where, you know, the word prudence, okay, discipline comes into play here as well, so. Yeah, well, yeah. When was the first, first sport that women were allowed to play in the Olympics and, and how long did it take the women to be allowed to, to be Olympians? Uh, oh, that's an interesting question there, Vivian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, of course, okay, we know that, uh, you know, Greek women were training, okay, women in ancient Sparta were training, okay, they were training, and they could, as we said, you know, be uh, in the games, they could partake and attend them. Uh, now, to tell you the truth, uh, I don't know which particular sport, okay, was first exercised by uh, the Greek women. That's an in interesting... The, in the ancient okay. times, there yeah. were special... Uh, uh, kind of the Olympic Games for women. You mm -hmm. see, of course, who would be uh, the first who would be participating in this were uh, women from Sparta, because exactly. they were great. And another thing what it is, you see, of course, the Athenian ladies, they would be trained, you see, uh, but uh, on, not in the same way as Spartan women, but for them also would be, but it would be not maybe in, in the same way as we can see now, you see, they wouldn't be so much for, uh, showing their power, their, 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 their uh, rudeness, their not sweetness, their not femininity. Well, but they would be, they would be, you see, but it would be separate. It would be separate. Well, maybe kind of the entertainment which would be involved into this. Uh, mm -hmm. So, as you can I, see. I know, I know in ancient Sparta, women were allowed, okay, to compete not only with women, but also with men, okay? So they were allowed to compete also with males, yes. That's mm -hmm. right. Even the right. naked ones? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Never. Okay. Uh, and I, I mentioned that nudity, okay, for the Greeks, okay, was not ashamed. They were not ashamed of their nudity. They felt mm -hmm. very proud because this is, they said that, you know, what made the difference between them and the barbarians, okay? This is what distinguished them. Yeah, and the beauty of the body was... And the beauty the of the body, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So when girls are wearing very light uh, clothes in summer especially, yes, it's a natural thing. And another thing what in the ancient Olympia, there is in museum, if you happen to, to be there or you saw, in ancient Olympia, there is a wonderful sculpture, wonderful sculpture of the Niki. You see, after the big, uh, if we go, the Niki, yes. Always well, I'm trying to pay attention of the young ladies on how this Nikki was dressed. All those the sculptures were asked to be um, presenting the lady dressed, you see. On the other hand, on the other hand, you should to pay attention how she was dressed when she is uh, uh, when she is, you see, running maybe there and everything. You can see the beauty of her body. So although she is wearing the clothes, but on the other hand, she is naked. So it's not a shame. So maybe, well, it's also very useful for the young, beautiful uh, girls to remember, okay? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? Okay, I, I have one for, for you, Joanna, just an opinion mainly. Okay, you know, the cost of um, hosting the games today is very, very, very expensive and a huge like financial debt to countries that host the games. And I don't know about you, but I've seen more and more on social media on that this like movement of a return to the games permanently home, home to Greece, and for Greece to host them on a regular basis. And I don't know, I, I kind of like that thought, but 
just throwing it out there to get you know your opinion or anyone mm -hmm. else's opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. However, we're still trying to pay off what we do. <laughs> Yes, George. This is true. This is true. We're trying to. Play I mean, off. I mean, the clever thing, the, the very clever thing that other countries did for their for their Olympics when they hosted them, it was that they created all the stadiums and everything to be portable. So when the Olympics were done, everything was going to be moved to the next country, uh, and the the country that hosted the Olympics the previous the, the past years would basically have. I, of course, a coast, but not into the extent that we had because we created everything to be stable for forever. It's there and it's just being rotting, basically. I don't know if you if you know what the um, the, the failure of Delta, which is down down close to Pirea, I think, to Pirea area. Mm -hmm. This is basically just 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 sitting there, not deteriorating. Being, deteriorating. <laughs> exactly, it's just there. <laughs> For no, for no, no it's not reason. being useful yeah it's not we, being we, useful. We, we spent we spent billions of euros to host the olympics to to host the olympics but but in the end we yeah we did something wrong with the coasts here yeah well most countries are having very huge financial problems even if you know brazil just recently you know that finished uh, have, hosting the games suffered huge financial debt with it um, but if it, if it were more stable, we would be able to get maybe the axia, the value out of the buildings and the facilities and the, the sites that you know, yeah. can be used on for more, for different, you know, venue, for di different venues, for different uh, games. I don't Maybe know. I think it would be less expensive to have it just in one country like the Greece every, every four years and you understand where it's going to be. There's no money that's being spent on competition. Yeah. Uh, all the, 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 what do you call it? The um, race to try to build the best and the be most beautiful and the most expensive. And then when you at the end, when nothing is on time, there's this a massive spending of money. Yeah. you know, just to get to meet the deadlines. And that's what happened with Greece, you know? And, and they just like, they didn't even care how much money was being spent. They just had to meet the deadlines and everybody took advantage. That, yeah, that and it was after so many years that they were returning back to the home country, you see, right. you know, so they really wanted to go completely out of their way, okay? And, you know, create something brilliant, which they right. did, and but- it but there, as, as George says, we're still paying it off. Okay, we are yeah. still you know, trying to pay we off. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't think in advance. We basically just wanted to host the best Olympic Games in history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they were they were they were great, but still they were um, a success. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't get to the point that we would be able what we built at that time to be able to use it now and in 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 future years. Yeah. That's, that's where, why Dina's that's where we missed the game. That's why Dina's point actually makes the most sense. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because you know, by you know, as you said, you know, keeping it within, you know, the country, then at, at the same time, you are able to, in a sense, refund, you know, or let's say uh mend what is you know destroyed, okay, or is deteriorating, you know, but you have the money to do it. So you're able to maintain what you have, right. you see. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a thought, and it would be interesting if that, you know, and, and, and maybe since Greece is ho would host it every four years, like a different country could take on, you know, the representation. So, you know, one year it would be, say, you know, uh, Germany, you know, another year it would be Japan, another year that would open, the open and closing ceremonies would be done by them, you know, so they're, they're hosting, you know what I mean? It would be a sponsor. What? A sponsor. Yeah, they would sponsor, but they would also showcase their own country. Mm -hmm. You know how each country, you know, shares their culture. Yeah, they would be like yes. themed. They would be like themed Tokyo Olympics, yeah. but in the in the, the original place. But, mm -hmm. but take place in Greece. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I thought that was a really interesting thought. That yeah. would have been right. this huge, massive waste of money. You know, that countries spend to host the right. game. It's, it's sad. You know, a lot. Maybe just try and call the Olympic Committee because that actually sounds pretty good. Dina, you can suggest that. <laughs> you <yeah>. can suggest <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> there is a large, there is a movement, Dina. There is a movement to have, have it uh, in one country because of the expense. And look at Tokyo right now. It, yeah. it's, it, they have a surge in, in the virus. The, the likelihood of athletes wanting to come down even, even less than it was last year because right. they, 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 for their safety in this short amount of time. And they spent so much money already. Of course, you and see. And they can't even have spectators to help yeah. cover yeah. the cost. And so that's why this desperate need to try to keep some kind of gains in for the summer, but I just don't see it's possible. And if you just had it in one country like Greece, which I definitely agree <laughs> that that's what should happen, you wouldn't have yes. this. So many countries now don't want the Olympics because of the expense. They have already said they are not even going to buy for it anymore. And so you're getting maybe. round. Who are you going to have? Bring it back to Greece. Maybe in future. I don't know how it, it is possible, but maybe it will be again virtual. Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But mm. how can you? What's going to happen with the summer games? Are you, are you hopeful that they're going to take place? No, I don't think so. Yeah. No, no. It's I don't think bad. either. Yeah, right it's now. Happen. Yep. It's, yeah. it's yeah unless the vaccination process you know gets i don't know quicker know. yeah it gets moving quicker yeah if quicker or not quicker again it's very difficult to have people won't go yeah, yeah. they can't well, this year let's see we had a super bowl Cross. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Yes. Here in Tampa. <laughs> okay. Great. When is that supposed to happen? No, it happened. It happened. It in, happened uh, already. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that was a major event for you. Oh yeah. Regardless of the virus, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we'll 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 uh, end it here. If anyone else has, a, unless anyone else has something else to add. No, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It was wonderful. Thank you very yeah. much also yeah, for attending you. and for being present. And, uh, I hope to see all of you soon. <laughs> yes, we'll talk soon, Yana. Same, I hope. I'm going to stop the recording now. And okay. then, um, Tyler, very nice having you, my dear. Yeah, okay. thanks for having me.